welcome to the farm vlog today guys well we've had a few strawberries over the last week or so that we were able to pick but just not enough this year being our first year on the homestead to make jam and make all sorts of other kind of cool desserts with the strawberries so we thought we'd head to a local farm in our area and pick some strawberries so that we can make jam we can freeze some strawberry and make a whole bunch of yummy dishes but first we need to let the chickens out and give them a treat Good morning, chick chicks. Good morning. Come on out. Good morning, chickens. Hey, King Kong. How's it going, buddy? Come on out, girls. You guys got any eggs in there today? Huh? Come on out. I got a treat for you guys. I got a yummy treat for you guys. King Kong, are you going to share? Are you going to be a good rooster today? Some mashed potatoes, some lettuce. They love mashed potatoes. I think mashed potatoes would have to be their favorite. Let's go inside and let's check for some eggs. Okay, is today the big day that we get an egg? Are they still slacking? Mm, nope. Not yet. No eggs yet from the girls. Come on, give us some eggs. We're running out of eggs already. We didn't buy any eggs the other day at Costco, hoping that our chickens would start producing soon. Oh well. What do you think, dude? Really? Still another month? Hi, Freddy. Good morning. Good morning, buddy. <laughs> Good morning, Karma. Yes, I know. You guys are always so excited when somebody comes out to play with you. I know. Okay, come on. Let's go. So no eggs from our chickens yet, but that's okay, guys, because we know they're going to start producing in the next few weeks here. It is a beautiful day here in northern New Brunswick on the homestead, and King Kong agrees with me on that. I would like to make a correction though. In my last video, I mentioned that we're going to plant our vegetable plants next year in the middle of July here in Northern New Brunswick. That's not the case. You should be planting the first week of June to the middle of June. One of our viewers pointed out that I'd made a little bit of a mistake and I just wanted to let you guys know that we will not be planting in the middle of July. It will be June next year. But today, we're going to bring you guys along as we go to a local farm and get some strawberries. Because, well, we have a few strawberries on our homestead, but just not enough to make jam and all sorts of yummy treats. So come along on the farm vlog as we get some strawberries. Good morning, Nova. Hey, Nova, you're in your hay. Panda. I see Lily just behind you there hiding, Panda. We gave you guys a treat over there. And put some lettuce in your feeder. Hi, Lily. Good morning. We topped up your guys' water. Are you guys chewing on the side of the stall there? Right there. Is that you, Panda? You guys be good. We'll bring you some strawberries. So we fed the goats, we topped up their water, we gave them a treat. Now let's head into town, let's go get some strawberries. So here we are guys, we have arrived at the u Pick Berry Farm. It's a funky bus. Actually looks quite busy here today. Yeah, look. 
Oh yeah, they got a little play place over Can there. Can you go and play? Yep. See worm? You know it? Yeah, there's a little there. place. There's, there's somewhere where we can go and play. Come on, Buckland. to the strawberry patch. You can't use your own bucket, so we had to buy theirs. These were $10 each, and you can fill them up as full as you can get them down in the field. So you guys can see behind us here, the kids are having a blast. This is a great place to bring the family and pick some berries. We'll put a link in the description to their Facebook page down below. So if you guys are in the area and you want to check it out, definitely come check these guys out. But we're just waiting for the tractor so we can jump on the wagon and head out to the strawberry field. You can see their other fields. This is their raspberry field. You can see the raspberries just aren't quite ready yet. Looks like just beside the raspberries, they have their blueberry field. Let's check over there. Let's see how their blueberries are doing in comparison to ours back home. Ah, see, theirs are still green. You can see the blueberries there. They're still green, but they're a little bit more mature than our plants, so they're gonna produce bigger berries than ours. Ours are gonna take a few years to produce big, luscious berries like these ones, but eventually, this is how big our blueberry bushes will be. We're really excited about that. I think I hear the tractor now, guys. Come, we better get in line. Are you guys ready to go pick yes. some strawberries? Yeah. Are you excited? Yeah. You guys got your own baskets? Yeah. Yeah, let's see your baskets. Whoa, those are big baskets. Are you going to get lots of strawberries, Corbin? Yeah. And you, Maya? Yeah. You're going to get lots? And you're going to get your own strawberries? Yeah? yeah. Okay, well, let's get in the lineup. The tractor's here. So we are just on our way out to the strawberry patch now. You can see all their other fields behind us. There's one other tractor in front of us and then we'll be there shortly. So you can see we're out here in the strawberry patch. So let's pick some strawberries. Let's see how many good ones we get. Oh, look at this. I found some good ones here. Oh, here's a big one. Look at that. That's a nice strawberry. Oh, I got a great one. Look at that. There's a whole bunch of them here. Lots of yummy strawberries. I just picked two giant ones. Those my, ones are good ones, my Corbin. Basket, Dad. Good job, my job, buddy. Basket. Let's see your basket, Maya. Your basket's almost full. You've got tons of strawberries mine. in your basket. Yeah, because... Wow. Yeah. Basket. Fill them right up. Fill your basket right up. Okay. You guys got a good spot here. Are these where all the good ones are? Yep. Oh, here's a big one right here. Look at this one, Maya. Look at this one. Look at this strawberry. Look at that. Oh, put it in your basket. Okay, there you go. Like, that's two strawberries. <laughs> I think you found the biggest ones They're here. They're huge. These might be record-breaking strawberries. Look at them. They're just giant. Yummy jam. Yummy jam, that's for sure. It's very hot here today. It's there's nice though. People, but there's no bugs, so I'll take it. Okay, that is, is the biggest strawberry ever. Look at that thing. It's so big. It's huge. Super yummy strawberries. We got three baskets and Corbin has the fourth basket. Here he comes now. How many you got there, buddy? Okay. Wow. Is that is really is good. Good good job, man. Look at all these yummy strawberries. 
So we have filled our baskets up as full as we could possibly get them. So we're gonna get our strawberries home. We're gonna make some yummy strawberry jam, cut up some of these strawberries, freeze them to make fruit salads and all sorts of other yummy treats. So we got a huge haul of strawberries today and they look yummy. But now we gotta stop by Costco and pick up some supplies to make jam. So let's head over to Costco. I can't believe we gotta get eggs. Our chickens aren't producing yet. Ah, chickens. One of the things we're grabbing for our jam is some lemon juice. Our next item is some sugar. How many bags do we need? Um, well, we wanna do lots, so we're gonna get two bags. Two bags of sugar. No, that one's got a rip. Let's do these two. Okay. So we've picked up a few things at Costco that we needed so we can head home and we can make some jam and some other tasty treats, the strawberries that we picked up from our local farm today. You can see by our strawberries here that we had a great day picking strawberries at a local farm with the kids. What we're gonna do this afternoon is we're gonna make our first batch of strawberry jam. Now this is a very basic recipe I've been using for years. It works really well. All you need is fresh strawberries, sugar, lemon juice, and some pectin. Now you can use half the amount of sugar if you use low sugar pectin. We like to use the full amount because the kids think it tastes better. But it's super easy. I'm gonna start by slicing up my strawberries. I need about six cups of sliced strawberries. Now that all of our strawberries are sliced, we're gonna go ahead and pour them into our pot. Get out of there, strawberries. And then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna mash them with a potato masher. It just helps speed up the process of making the jam and it makes sure you don't have giant chunks left in your jam. We like more like a jelly substance. and stir in our lemon juice now. This is a quarter cup of lemon juice. Now this recipe definitely can be doubled very easily, but I wouldn't triple or quadruple it as it doesn't really work as well then. But definitely if you want to double it, you can do that. Now we're going to put in our pectin. And we're going to just slowly add this while we mix it, trying to avoid any clumps. So once that's nice and mixed, get off there. what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a teaspoon of butter. You don't have to add this. I add it because it helps keeping the foaming down. It's just a protein that stops it from boiling over. Like I said though, you do not have to add it. What we're going to do is put our jam on high heat and we're going to bring it to a rolling boil. Our strawberries have been cooking now for about five minutes. They're almost at a rolling boil and we're just getting ready to put in our sugar. I'm gonna try and mix the sugar in a little bit at a time. So you're gonna to wanna to stir this until all of your sugar is dissolved, and then you wanna bring it back up to a rolling boil, and you're gonna let it boil for a full minute. After that minute, you can take it off the heat and put it into your warm jars, and then we'll get them into the water bath and get them ready to can. Our sugar's been mixed in, and we've been stirring constantly and brought it back up to a rolling boil. We're now gonna let it boil for one full minute before we take it off the heat. So our pot's been boiling for one full minute. I'm gonna take it off of the heat now. We're gonna scrape the foam off the top and then we'll get our jars ready to put the strawberries in the jar. Now the reason you scrape the foam off the top is because it traps air bubbles in your jam and you don't want any air bubbles in it as that could allow bacteria to grow. So you just wanna make sure you get out as much of the foam as you can. 
We have our jars, they're washed, they're clean, they're ready to fill. You want to make sure that you leave at least a quarter of an inch from the top so that they have air space for when you're boiling them. So that's about good on that one. What I'm going to do is put a lid on it and I'm going to put a cap on it. Now the caps, I'm just going to do them finger tight. So basically when it does that, it's tight enough. And we're just going to fill up the rest of our jars then we're going to put them in the water bath to can. Okay, so out of our first batch we ended up with six and a half four ounce jars. Now we're going to put them into the water bath, we're going to turn them on, and when it comes to a boil, we're going to let them boil for 10 minutes and then they're all done. I'm going to turn them on to high heat and we're going to let it come to a full boil and then we're going to let it sit at a boil for 10 minutes. Our jars have been boiling for 10 minutes. We're going to take them off the heat, we're going to set them on a towel to cool, and we're going to let them rest for 24 to 48 hours to make sure that the pectin has a chance to set. tongs are very, very helpful because it is hot in that water. Hot like a hot tub? Oh, hotter than a hot tub. Much hotter. You definitely would not want to climb in there. Mm, they're already popping. That's good. That is a good sign. They're sealing up. And this is just the first round that we're doing. We just wanted to show you guys how to make it. We're gonna be making probably another three or four batches over the next couple days. You wanna put away a good two dozen jars of jam to last us through the winter and into next season till we're ready to can some more jam. And next year we're hoping to have our own strawberries ready. Our plants this year are brand new, of course, because we haven't even been here a year yet. So next year we're hoping we have enough strawberries from our own plants that we don't have to go and pick them, which will be very nice. What do you figure? We got about 20 strawberries so far from our own plants this year. Yeah, so far I'd say probably 20. And we've, we've just washed them and just eaten yeah, them with lunch and snacks. Yeah, we eating them as they've been ready. Yeah. So. But on a large scale, we had to go to a local farm this year and but pick our okay own. that's okay because it's good to support local farmers too because then that goes back into the economy in our area and it helps everybody out. Correct. So these jars are ready to sit. We're going to let them sit until I hear all of them ping. Basically that's the sound you hear of the lid sucking down to make the seal. And then what I'll do is I'll loosen these top rings, I'll wipe all the edges to make sure there's no jam on them and then we're actually gonna leave them with no rings on them. And that way you can make sure that they all stay sealed and that they're safe to eat all year. What are you doing? I'm peeling eggs. Why? Because I'm gonna pickle them. You are? I am. We haven't done that on the homestead yet. I know, we haven't pickled eggs before. I thought we were making kombucha next. Oh, we are going to, but I needed room in the fridge to put the kombucha and the strawberries. So in order to do that, I had to take the eggs out and peel them so I can put them in the pickle jar. You mean these yummy strawberries? Those are the strawberries, yes. Are we gonna use some and blend it up and make strawberry kombucha? We are gonna make some kombucha. I'm not sure about the blending up though. The last time we did juice, they were a little bit explosive. So I think we're best off to use the whole fruit. Nah, I want to go with the blending again. It's yeah? sweeter, it's okay. juicier, you it's it up <laughs> it's fruitier. It's rocketing. It's refreshing. It's refreshing. No, no, it's not just refreshing. It's Rocket. refreshing. <laughs> I see. Ooh. 
These are supposed to be our eggs from our chickens. And what did we have to do today? We had to wrangle some escapees. That's the first time any of them have actually got out or even tried to get out. We had two chickens escape the yard they today. They're like Houdinis. They went through a solid fence. Well, it's not solid, but... The hole's fence. smaller than the chicken. It is, and the one chicken couldn't get back in through the fence, so how did it get on the outside of the fence? I think they might have flapped their wings and flown you over. Think they did, maybe. I didn't think they would try. There's lots of good food in their run. But you know what chickens always say. The grass is greener on the other side. That's correct. Maybe they were trying to cross the road. We should have asked them. Maybe they were trying to cross. Why did the chicken cross the road? To get to the greener grass. I don't think that's how it goes. But they wanted to come back for the strawberry tops you had for them. But then they, they couldn't, couldn't get... get back in. Exactly. So what's they up with that? Stuck on the outside. So we had to like wrangle the chickens back into the pen. Hopefully they're still in the pen. Hmm. I should go check on them. You should go check on them. See if those jailbirds have escaped. I'm gonna peel my eggs. You do that. Oh, you got it open. I did. Good job. Mm, take a leaf. Egg. Egg equals Egg. juice. Egg. Egg plus juice equals pickled eggs. They're not exactly pickled eggs because we didn't do the brine and everything, but they're as close to pickled eggs as I would like to get. And we'll just leave them in the pickling solution in the fridge. Do you and think it'll days. still taste good? Yeah, it will. They'll taste like a pickle. Like a dill pickle? Like a dill pickle. Oh, Look at that. There's your egg. Cool. Did you check on the chicken? I did. And? They're all there. Is it time for kombucha? It is time for kombucha. I'm gonna get the tea started and we're gonna blend up some of these yummy strawberries and make some kombucha. Sounds awesome. Perfect. For the kombucha, we're gonna blend up our strawberries and make them with strawberry juice this time. In small batches in the blender. We've done this before making it with juice, but I think our problem with one batch that we made is we let it ferment too yeah, long, too long, causing our bottles to explode when we open them. Yes, big time. There's a lot of explosion there. It's very important to let your second fermentation be only four days max. And then in the fridge. And in the fridge. Yeah. Not in a cold room. No, it has to be the not fridge. in a closet. It has to be like four degrees or under. Yeah. Straight into a fridge. Yeah. So I'm gonna just blend these up and I'm gonna do it in batches because I blend it really little for some reason. So before we start, we're gonna take our SCOBY out. Now we actually have two in here in what we're calling a SCOBY Hotel because we're only making one batch right now. And we've had this SCOBY for about three months. It started out just as this tiny little circle here. And you can see how big it's grown with each batch of kombucha we've made. So these are in really good shape. You can see there's no mold or anything on them, which is perfect. That means that our acidity and pH levels in our kombucha are right where we need them to be. We're just gonna give our kombucha a little stir. It's always good to stir it before you start making your drinks. It just gets everything mixed up and all your yeast activated. And if you listen, you can actually hear it buzzing, which is a good sign. So we're gonna take our strawberry puree and we're gonna put it in the bottom of our bottles. And we're gonna put a half a cup in each one. We got our strawberry puree in the bottom, and now we're gonna fill them up with our kombucha. Okay, that is our last bottle for this batch. Now we did just a small batch this time because we're not sure how we're gonna like the pureed strawberry, so we thought we'd just do a few just to try it out the first time. We did leave a little bit of fluid left in our container. That's just called a starter, and it helps get your next batch going. 
that's boiling on the stove behind me. We're gonna let these ferment for four days and then they're gonna go into the fridge and hopefully they're yummy. The Runamuck family had a crazy busy day today. We went and picked strawberries, we made jam, we made kombucha, we made some strawberry syrup for our ice cream. Now we're gonna relax with a nice frosty glass of kombucha out of our last batch. If you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. If you're new to our channel, make sure you subscribe and turn on the bell notification so that you're notified every time we post a new video. We'll see you guys in the next video. As always, thanks for watching.